Global warming has taken a backseat to a lot of things as people focus on obviously things like the presidential campaign, terrorism, you name it. But that could change if people were to actually read this alarming new study. It shows that there is a serious problem that, put it in personal terms, my kids' generation are going to have to worry about, spelling out how the melting Antarctic ice sheet could raise sea levels and significantly in that and turn coastal areas of big cities into lakes. Now, I spoke about that with Dr. Robin Elizabeth Bell, research professor at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University. Doctor, uh, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Listen, uh, some of the folks laugh at me because I, 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 this stuff, I obsess over this stuff, but I, and sometimes it's seemed or deemed as inside baseball, but just talk about the significance of this report um, and how the timetable, while everybody knew this was a potentially a problem, if they thought it was centuries from now, we're talking decades from now, before 2100, some of the realities, if this report's right, how it will change really the Earth's landscape. Well, there's a lot of ice on our planet, and usually we kind of forget about it because it's off the map, right? It's, we look at flat maps, and it's at the polar regions. And we know as the planet warms, the ice sheets are changing, and this report has taken the best shot at what we know is happening and looked forward. And we know since you, know, since you talk about your grandkids, since my grandmother was born, sea level in lower Manhattan has gone up mm, 11 inches. And really what this report says is that by 2100, it could go up closer to 30 to 36 inches. And give an idea for people who say two or three feet, what's, that's some of the world's biggest and most significant cities be underwater. Well, it's, most of us live at the beach. You know, we like to live in the beach. It's a nice place. It's easy to get goods in and out. So there are a lot of places from Florida to New York that will be impacted by this. And just to give uh, the significance of the report and its authors, um, uh, this was not, um, you know, some agenda-driven uh, project by uh, a Greenpeace or something. These are extremely reputable. This has been in development for a long time. They're actually able to map historically, which they'd always had a problem on the modeling. Uh, I mean, they're not saying this definitely will happen, but they think people ignore this at their own peril. And the timeline is really the most significant thing, right, Doctor? That this well, all of a sudden, I, we're not talking 150 years from now. This is something 80-something 80, 80 years from now, within the next 80 years, we're talking feet, not inches, we're going to have to deal with. Right. And that's what this report shows, is that they figured out how ice sheets actually change, and they put it into a numeric model, kind of like the ones we use to project weather. Only they're projecting what's going to happen with the ice as the oceans warm and the atmosphere warms. And that's what they really struggle to do, is what happens when you put meltwater on top of an ice sheet. And that's one of the things that's making it go fast. We warm the air, we put water on top, and things change fast. And one of, uh, at least for people who are looking for visuals, and it's hard when you're talking about melting uh, ice sheets for a lot of folks to get their arms around it, but something as big as Rhode Island of an ice sheet broke off about uh, 13, 14 years ago, uh, just to give people as a frame of reference. One of the, the things I took away from the report was there's no silver bullets here in terms of a fix. Uh, maybe structurally people are going to, we're going to have to build walls, but, you know, sure, we can and should do things about emission standards in this, in this world, but even so, it seems the clock's already ticking, um, and we just have to wake up and deal with some of the realities of what we've done, right? Well, there are two messages. One is we have to be ready for a sea level to go up. But their report also shows that if we put less carbon dioxide into the air, that the change won't go as fast, that maybe your grandkids will have a bigger beach to enjoy. So there, the, there is a good sign to this and that there's a chance that it's a wake-up call and we have to start acting as a society to see if we can better take care of our planet. Well, one way I think to do that is to scare folks, doctor, and in the time I have left with you, given this is your focus of study, just try, hopefully better than me, to just communicate to the audience just how significant 
this new schedule of warming and the impacts it would have will have here uh, on our viewing audience, and this isn't a problem for one part of the world. This obviously is raising global uh, water levels, sea levels across the board. Well, this means that if you were to walk down to the beach and just stand there, the way you know you feel the tides come in and out, that in the next hundred years, the water would probably come up over your entire legs and maybe up towards your waist, depending on how tall you are. It's a serious problem. Doctor, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Coming up next, everybody, the scathing new film about America's obsession with guns, how gun violence ruins the lives of millions of ordinary people, while at the same time making a whole lot of people really, really rich.